the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For the Lord is my rod and my staff. He's a strong town. He's a strong town. He's a strong town. You are strong and mighty. He's a strong town. He's a strong town. Well, praise God. Good morning and welcome to the New St. Paul Live, right here coming from the sanctuaries here at New St. Paul. We're located at 15340 Southfield Drive in Detroit, Michigan. I'm Elder P.A. Brooks, and we want to thank you for allowing us into your homes, your hospital rooms, wherever you are. Now, let's go right into the service and enjoy the Lord on this Lord's Day. God bless you. To God, come on somebody, it can't just be me. Be the glory. Come on, open your mouth and say it with me. To God be the glory. Come on, say to God be, be the glory. Oh. Somebody lift your voice and say, Oh, for the things. Look back over your life and see where he brought you from. And wave your hand to him and say, Oh, for the things that he. and give the Lord praise on tonight. Somebody praise him for what he's done for you. Wave your hand to him one more time and just say, Lord, for the things. Oh, for the things. Oh, for the things. Thank God. I thank God tonight. I'm saved and sanctified, baptized and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank God. Thank God. God bless you. Take your seat. Take your seat in the house of the Lord. How? Hallelujah. 
Hollywood. All right. All right. Just on your way to your seat, look at your neighbor and say, look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness. Ah, yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. And God bless each of you. Let's go to the word of the Lord, to the book of uh, St. Luke. St. Luke. Amen. On tonight, man, just want to share with you a little bit on tonight. St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Uh, this will be a verse of scripture that's much read. It won't be something you haven't heard before. And uh, I know that when we preach, no matter who we are, the Bible says there's no private interpretation. Uh, you're not the first one to ever preach something. And uh, I know one time I thought I had really come up with something. Boy, I was preaching as years ago as a young man, young preacher, and I preached about uh, don't want to lose the cutting edge. And, I preached about the man that had the ax head, you know, and it broke off and he had to get the prophet Elisha. Elisha came and said, where is it? Where did it fall? And, you know, and, it, and he put the stick in there and the, the Bible said the ax head did swim. And uh, my subject was, Lord, I don't want to lose the cutting edge. And, oh, man, we preached. I preached. We, oh, we had church. You couldn't tell me I had came up with something, boy. I'm telling you, we preached, shouted. And after service was over, I'm feeling good, you know. We just shouted, shout the folk, break through. And uh, one of the elders came up to me from another church, a senior elder. He said, oh, Ella Walker, I really enjoyed you tonight. He said, you know, I heard Bishop O.T. Jones <laughs> preach that. I was like, I said, you mean to tell me they was preaching this before I was born? <laughs> oh, there's no private interpretation. Whatever I preach, somebody's already preached it. And uh, I'm just coming along again to reiterate or confirm the word that's already out there. Amen. It was here before I got here. And if the Lord delay is coming, it's going to be here after I'm gone. And heaven and earth will pass away. He said, my word is not going to pass. Luke, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on what? And what else? And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and for a thought on tonight, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Let, us let us get ready, get ready. for extraordinary, extraordinary. conquest. Amen. Extraordinary contrast. Extraordinary Conquest beyond the norm, beyond the expectation. What does scripture say? What is that? Uh, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him. Huh? That's able to do what? And abundantly, what? Above all that we ask or think. Now that always amazes me because he says uh, three things. He says, now unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above. I'm like, how high can you go? But he's able to exceed our imagination. Aren't you glad about that? And I'm telling you, I have so many miracles uh, that's attached to my personal life. And I think all of us probably do. If you start talking to us, I found out that the saints, one thing about us that kind of puts us in common, somewhere along the line, you keep talking to us. And you're going to run up on a miracle. Something that we're going to have to say, <laughs> couldn't nobody have done this but the Lord. It had to be God. Anybody but beside me got an it had to be God moment in your life? Had to be. Couldn't have been nobody but him. 
And I think about I had headaches for so many years, probably from the age of five, as, as, as early as I can remember. I just had terrible headaches. And I would have those headaches every day. I'm talking about terrible headaches, migraines. I have every headache. If you've had it, I know about it. I mean, I've had it starting the base of the neck, starting the eyes, right side of the head, left side of the head, across the forehead, in the top of the head, just all kind of headache. Headache make me have to come home from work, lay down in a dark room. My wife had to tell the kids, be quiet. He can't handle no noise. Lights out. Just headaches. I've been to the doctor. I've been manipulated. I've been twisted, pulled on. I've been x-rayed, CAT scanned. I mean, I've been everything. They gave me all kind of medicines. I didn't had muscle relaxers. I've had pain relievers, pain removers, and the stuff wouldn't work. I had headaches, and I remember the last time I had a brutal headache, I ended up in the hospital, headache for three days. They did all kind of stuff trying to figure out how to heal or deal with this headache. And you know what? After three days, they let me out of the hospital, and uh, they said, well, uh, we don't have any answer. And they sent me to a place called the Headache Clinic sent me now surely you're gonna get an answer and now I'm preaching I'm pastoring and here I am I'm sitting up in the headache clinic and in the headache clinic the doctor started to go down my history do you have this anybody in your family got that you all know when you go to the doctor they start asking all these questions and uh, after a while they said well what's the problem you can't get rid of it I said doc I don't know and uh, he said, he asked this question that brought tears to my eyes. He said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a preacher. And when I said it, what happened is I started thinking about all the times I preached and the many miracles that I've seen and people that have been delivered and I laid hands on them and all these type of things. And I can't do anything about this headache. I mean, the thing hurt me to my core when I told him I'm a preacher. My, my eyes filled with tears. And so he said, here, I want you to take these pills, this medication, and uh, we're going to do a follow-up. And I left out, and I was driving, and I just said, it's the wisdom of God, but it came to me. They told me they didn't know why I was having the headache. And then they told me, now take these pills. I said, I'm not taking them because there's no reason you haven't figured out anything. And right now to this day, I have the whole prescription. It was four of them. I have them in my drawer. I keep meaning to get them framed. But, uh, I, you know, it said, and I wouldn't take them. And I had resigned at that moment. I resigned. Well, I guess I'm going to die with these. I just said, I'm going to die with these headaches. They would be so vicious. And my wife and I went on a vacation, and it was on my birthday. I was standing in the sand, and I noticed I didn't have a headache. It was the first time I don't know when I didn't have a headache. And then the next day, I didn't have a headache. And then a week later, I didn't have a headache. And then a month later, I said, the Lord. I don't know where they went. Somewhere between midnight and daylight, the Lord just took it from me. I mean, it was a miracle. I haven't had to take no medicine, no pills. To this day, the headaches are gone. My God, I'm telling you, it was extraordinary. That's how God works. I'm here to tell you, get ready. You get ready for some extraordinary conquests. Clap your hands and give God praise for the extraordinary. Now here in our text tonight, Jesus is talking to the disciples and uh, he tells them something. He says, I give unto you power. I give unto you power and I'm gonna give it to you for this reason, to tread on the serpent and the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. But he says, I give unto you power. Now, that word power in the Greek, that word power, when you study it out, is exousia. 
exousia. I know many of you all already know that. That word exousia, it means I give you the authority. I give you the right to act. I give you the actual unimpeded power to act. You have the right to put the devil in his place. Somebody don't even know that. You have the right to put the devil in his place. Now he said, exude, I give you the power, the authority. Now when you get to Acts, the first chapter, he said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now that power, when you study it out, is dunamis, which means it's, our, it's where we get our word dynamite. So what, when you put the two together, he's saying, I've given you the authority, and then I've also given you the ability. Let me put it to you like this. It's like a police officer. Now, he's been deputized. He has the right to pull you over. He has the right to tell you, all right, stop it, put your hands up. He has the right to arrest you when something is wrong. Now, if you don't want to cooperate, He's been given this thing on his side, and it comes with some little attachments that he can put in there, and he's got a billy club and all kind of stuff, so not only does he have the right, but he has the power. He has the ability to do what he's told you to do. I'm here to tell you that you've got the right and you've got the ability to put the devil in his place. Put him back where he belongs. The Bible said you're going to tread on him. You're going to tread on him. That means put him under your feet to crush him. Bruise his head. You can put him where he belongs. And he said you're going to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, the reason why I believe the Lord wants to bring our attention to serpents and scorpions is because, not because they're really stronger than us. Do you know, a snake is not really stronger than a man. Not normal. You might get one of those big pythons, you know. But, but by and large, a man is stronger than a serpent. A man is certainly stronger than a scorpion. All you would be able to do, you could just pick a serpent up, and you really could tie him in a knot and stretch him if he would behave. And a scorpion, you could just stomp on him, and that would be the end of it. But what makes him such a problem is he's got this venom. He has this venom, and that's the thing about him. He's deadly because of what's in him. That's why you got to be careful about that fella, because under normal circumstances, you're not stepping on snakes and scorpions. Under normal circumstances, you're going to do all you can to avoid them because of the venom that they have in them. But God has given us an anti-venom called the Holy Ghost. My God. You remember the story of Paul in Acts, the 27th chapter. And I'm not going to try to preach through all these different stories, but you remember that story of Paul when he had finally gotten off the ship and made it to shore. The, the boards had broken up. He made it to shore, some on boards and some on broken pieces. And, and when he got there, he was, he was there. The barbarians met him, and he was warming his hand over the fire, had gathered these sticks and, and was warming his hand over the fire. And the Bible says that a viper leaped out of the fire and fastened itself on to Paul. Now, you know, when it did it, the people were standing around and they were just waiting for Paul to just drop dead because they knew this was a venomous serpent. This wasn't a pet. This was a venomous serpent. Had fastened and had bit him, and the Bible says that Paul shook him off into the fire and felt no harm. In other words, he says, even though the snake got on me, what he's got in him, I'm not going to let it get in me. And that's the thing you've got to know. The devil wants to get it in you. But you've got to say, no, God told me to step on you and just tread on the serpent and on the scorpion and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, the serpent and the scorpion, it represents that which opposes God's plan for your life. Now, you do know that God has a plan for your life. As a matter of fact, God told me to tell you this. Open your mouth and say, praise God for my future. Praise God for my future. 
my God, you ought to start telling yourself, I praise God for my future. God has a plan for your life. And sometimes the enemy tries to infiltrate his plan with thoughts and have you thinking you're not going to make it and thinking it's too much and thinking you can't handle it. But then you've got to supersede your thoughts and Satan's thoughts with God's thoughts. For he says, I've been thinking and I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. And so you've got to come against everything that opposes God's plan for your life. There's certain things that the enemy does that seeks to frustrate the plan of God for your life. The scripture tells us, it goes to great pains to tell us that we walk in the flesh. What is it, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3? We walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Fourth verse, for the weapons of our warfare are not colonel, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Ephesians 6 and 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I took a little time the other day, but just want to want to tell you about that. That principalities, that root word is prince. That tells you that Satan's kingdom is organized. It's organized. And so you have certain spirits that have been sent out. And that's why you find that there's certain communities where there's been a, a demon that's been set over that community. And all of a sudden, you know, that community is known as a drug-ridden community. Or that community is known for its uh, uh, perversion. Or that community is known for murder. And things of that nature because of that ruling spirit that's been set over that community. Now, when you look at it, Daniel, the 10th chapter shows you about that ruling spirit. If you remember, Daniel had saw a vision and couldn't get an answer from God. He sought the Lord and he went on a 21-day fast. He was waiting to hear from God. And after the 21st day, uh, uh, Gabriel finally came through with the answer. And he told him, he said, Daniel, from the first day you prayed, God heard you. But I was in a battle. The prince of Persia withstood me. Now, when you say the prince of Persia, you're not talking about a man. Because no man can fight with an angel for 21 days. Jacob wrestled for one night. He came out limping. So it's not, it wasn't a man. This was a demon spirit. A demonic force that was fighting against the answer that God had for Daniel. And on the 21st day, God dispatched Michael the archangel and told him, bring down the prince of Persia so that my servant Gabriel can come through with the answer. I do want you to know some of the things you've been praying for are just hung up in the heavenlies. The enemy is fighting it and don't want it to come through, but hang on in there. My God is going to come to pass. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's going to come to pass. My God, we're fighting and we're struggling. Now, the enemy doesn't want you to be successful. If you really knew how powerful you really are in God, if you really knew how strong your destiny really is, think about it. I believe that's Mark, the fifth chapter in particular, that talks about the demoniac man. And if you remember when Jesus met him in the tombs, it talks about this fella that had the devil in him. He had the devil at such a degree that they couldn't chain him. They couldn't tame him. I mean, he was in the tombs. Folks just left him alone. Let him live in the graveyard. And there he was. And Jesus come walking through. And the demon cried out of that man and said, let us alone. What have we to do with you? It's not time. You're, you're tormenting me. And Jesus said, what's your name? And he said, my name is Legion. For we are many. Legion, many. In the Roman culture, a legion ranged anywhere from three to 6,000 men. He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus told him, you got to go. This is your last day in this fella. And they begged him saying, please don't, don't send us away. Let us go into the swine. And Jesus said, all right, I'll let you go. And the Bible says when them demons went out of that man, 
They ran into them pigs and ran them off the edge and down into the water and drowned them. And the number was about 2,000. You mean to tell me it took 2,000 demons to keep this man from his destiny? Do you recognize how much the devil have to do to stop what God has started in you? My God, it took 2,000 demons to hold this man. Now, I'm trying to tell you, that's why God automatically give us a 1,000 demon chasing anointing. For he said one will chase a 1,000 and two put 10,000 to flight. He know you got to be able to knock out a 1,000 devils all by yourself. The enemy has tried to do all type of things to stop you from reaching your destiny in God. You know I'm telling the truth. If we let you have testimony service and you just start running down the list of things the devil have done trying to mess you up. Some of you, you know you ought to be crazy. Some of you ought to be just out of your mind. But God had his hand on your life and have not let you be given over to death. Somebody give God praise right there my God my God you're stronger than you realize oh my God I just heard that shake your neighbor's hand and tell him that say you're stronger than you realize my God, you're stronger than you realize. And God has given you power and authority not just to cope with the devil, but to subdue that fella. Not just to put up with him. I'm tired of putting up with the devil. No, sir. We're not going to be roommates. We're not going to be running buddies. We're not going to be bed pals. The devil is a liar and he's got to go. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. My God, he didn't tell us to put up with him. He told us to cast him out. He told us to put him under our feet. Lift your hands and shout yes to the Lord. My God, he told us in Genesis 27, when you come into your dominion, you're going to take his yoke from off your neck. You're going to dominate the enemy. You're going to run over him. He told us to resist the devil and he will flee. He didn't tell you to run. He said resist him and he will flee. Do you not know that the devil is afraid of you? He knows that you have identity in God. He knows that if you ever really get connected and recognize who you really are in God is nothing he can do with you. Do you know that if he knows who you are in the spirit that he knows God didn't make no junk? Lift your hands and say God didn't make junk. My God, the Bible says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. When God wrought us in the lower parts of the earth, the Bible says that all of our members were written in his book. That's Psalm 139. Our members were written in his book. And when your daddy met your mama, he sent for your members and called your right hand to come to your wrist and called your wrist to come to your arm and your arm to come to your shoulder. You're no accident. You're no reject, no happenstance no bad chance but you're the absolute plan of God's infinite thinking when he was working and planning you out he said Jeremiah say not that I'm a child before you were formed in your mother's belly I had already called you <laughs> you didn't just get here you were called by God let me stop that. I'm getting excited, getting excited. To, my God, he intends for us to have dominion over the devil and to put him where he belongs. This is the day that God says, tell my people, I want them to go beyond expectations. I want them to go beyond what people think is going to happen. I want them to go beyond what they think is going to happen. Get ready for extraordinary conquests. I mean in this season, not just a superficial experience. I don't know about you, but I don't come to church just to have a little, a little experience with the Lord and just let him touch me a little bit. And I go home and I drop one tear and pull out a handkerchief. But man, I want to know him. In the power of his resurrection, 
I want to know him. And my God, I just want to know him. I want to have relationship with him. Man, I want him to walk with me and talk with me. I want to see his hand at work. I want to see his handiwork. I want to know him and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Lift your hand and shout, Lord, I want to know you. My God, I don't want just church as usual. I'm convinced that when I read the New Testament, the New Testament church was not a just as usual church. But my God, things happened in the New Testament church. And I'm not going to start preaching Acts again. I'd have to start talking more and more and more. <clears throat> but my God, the New Testament church was full of miracles and deliverances and things taking place. Lift your hands and say, Lord, send miracles. Send deliverances and let things take place. More than just the norm, the Lord is at work in us and the devil can't stop it. Lift your hand and say, the devil can't stop it. If he could, he would, but the devil can't stop it. You remember the story of Balak and Balaam? And remember, Balak saw the children of Israel spread all over. And he said, I can't stand what I'm looking at. It makes me sick to my stomach. And he went and sought out Balaam the seer and said, I need you to come and curse this people. I can't stand it. It's in Numbers, Numbers 21, 22, 23. It's in there. I can't stand what I'm looking at and so he says I want you to come and curse this people and Balaam looked and saw him and said well here's the problem these people are blessed and cannot be cursed my God look at your neighbor and tell him that say you're blessed and you can't be cursed said that, well, I know you looked at him. You looked at him on this side. i tell you what I want you to do. I want you to come see him from another angle. And he looked at him from another angle and said, well, you want to know the truth? He said, yeah, tell it to me. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Have I not spoken it? And shall I not bring it to pass? Have I not said it? And shall I not make it good they're blessed and they cannot be cursed they're blessed and it ain't nothing you can do about it lift your voice and give God praise in the house my God so you don't have to apologize for being blessed you just go to praising God because he blessed you you don't have to give no explanation. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know why I'm so blessed. Man, shut up with all of that. I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. I'm blessed because his hand is on me. I'm blessed because I'm walking under his favor. I'm blessed because I got a promise over my life. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My children are blessed. My wife is blessed. My money is blessed. My car is blessed. My job is blessed. My body is blessed. Somebody open your mouth, leap up on your feet and shout, I'm blessed. Bless, and it ain't nothing I can do about it. My God, the devil is at work, but he can't stop it. Yes, there's a restless you, there's a restless hostility man, that's been unleashed against the people of God. But God has given us the power over the enemy. Man. And it's time for us to get ready for some extraordinary conquests. Some victories that don't look like they ought to be victories. When I read my Bible, I read about so many victories that it makes my head spin. You remember the story of Abram and Lot. And you remember the conquest of the five kings. And the five kings was rolling over the face of the earth. They were subduing kingdoms and subduing this one and bringing down this king and bring it down this nation and finally they rolled up to a place and they decided they were going to attack Sodom 
and there was no problem there. But then when you read Genesis around the 14th chapter, it says, and they took Lot. That was a mistake. The Bible says, and they took Lot. Now, Lot was Abraham's nephew. And the Bible says that was his brother. But it was Abraham's nephew. They took Lot. Abraham was blessed by God. God's hand was on Abraham. And everything that was connected to Abraham had to be blessed. So they was doing all right till they messed with Lot. Because to mess with Lot was to mess with Abraham. To mess with Lot was to mess with the blessing. To mess with Lot was to mess with what God had said and some of you don't recognize that you don't have to take no mess off the devil when the enemy come and start messing with your children he was doing all right when he was down the street he was doing all right when he was next door across the alley he was doing all right on the other side of town but now you didn't mess with my son and I'm not going to sit down and take it. I'm not going to just lay down and die. But now you done rose the fight up in me. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. And the Bible says that Abraham got 318 men that he had trained himself and said, come on, we got to go get my boy. And they went and got Lot. They got Lot and his women. They got Lot and all the stuff they took. They got more than what the enemy took from them. I'm here to tell you that get ready for some extraordinary conquest. You remember the conquest of David. You remember what happened with him. Him, uh, when that giant stood up uh, and defied the armies of the living God uh, and I hear David ask the question uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine uh, that defies the armies of the living God uh, and said just let me at him I, I'll handle him by myself uh, and went out there and took down Goliath uh, with a slingshot and five stones uh, but it didn't take him but one shot uh, because God had given him a sniper's anointing. God had given him a target and he couldn't miss it. Some of you don't actually realize. But if you would go back down on your knees and pray. Because some of these kind go not out but through prayer and fasting. That your prayer comes with a sniper's anointing. God will cause you to pray on target. And will bust the devil up right where he is. Lift your voice and shout hallelujah. Come on shout hallelujah. Extraordinary conquest. You remember the story of Gideon. Hiding in the cave from the Midianites. Until the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And said God is with you thou mighty man of valor. I know you didn't know who you were. But I had to call you by your name. I had to give you the title you deserve. You've been walking in fear. You've been hiding in the cave. But you're a mighty man of valor. You've got more anointing than you realize. And today the Midianites number is up. And you're going to fight them and bring them down as one man. And Gideon had 32,000 men. And God said, I tell you what I need you to do. I need you to tell everybody that's scared, go home. And Gideon lost a mega church in just one day. In one day, 20 some thousand folks left. A whole mega church left him. And still it wasn't enough. He said, go tell, go tell them to drink. And everybody that laps water like a dog, those are the ones I'm gonna have you use. I'm not gonna let you use the ones that are sophisticated. I'm not gonna let you use the super educated. But I want you to use some folk that just got enough sense to have faith in God. Is there anybody here tonight that says, I've got enough sense to have faith in God? And he stripped them down to 300 men uh, and won the battle with 300 men. Uh, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Uh, extraordinary conquest. Uh, you remember the story of Jehoshaphat. Uh, he was surrounded by the enemy. Uh, he didn't know what he was going to do. Uh, and that's when the man of God shows up uh, and says, I come with a word from the Lord. Uh, 
ye shall not need to fight in this battle uh, for the battle is not yours uh, it belongs to God uh, I need you to shake your neighbor's hand. I'm preaching prophetically to you. Look at your neighbor dead in the eye. Don't play with them because I'm not playing with you. Tell them you shall not need to fight this battle. This battle is not yours. It belongs to God. Don't you worry about a thing. God's going to handle this situation. Your case is going to be delivered. Uh, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. And Jehoshaphat did this. Uh, he appointed singers uh, that they would go down in front of the army. Uh, and that they would praise the beauty of holiness. Uh, and while they were praising God, uh, the Lord set ambushment uh, against the enemy. Uh, and they turned on one another. Uh, I'm here to tell somebody today man, that your deliverance is going to be in your praise. Uh, your ability to lift your hands uh, while you're going through. Uh, your ability to open your mouth uh, while the enemy is surrounding you. Uh, your ability to leap for joy uh, is going to confuse the devil uh, because he thought he had you. Uh, your ability to tell God thank you. Uh, in the midst of the pressure uh, is going to cause the enemy uh, to let you go. Uh, lift your hands and give God praise. Uh, open your mouth and bless his name. God bless you. This is Bishop Sedgwick Daniels. As now we engage in one of the most sacred ordinances of our church. Receiving the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The apostle reminds us of the words of the Lord, where he says that we are to take of the wafer of the bread that is his broken body. And we are to drink of the juice that symbolizes his blood until his return. In this season now comes an opportunity for us to engage in fellowship and obedience to the word of the Lord. So now as you in your home, as we in our home, receive of the body and blood, let me bless the wafer and bless the juice. Dear Lord, our Father, bless, O oh God, the sacrament that these your people shall receive. You have said, dear Lord, that we are to examine ourselves. And if there be anything that is displeasing to you, we ask, dear Lord, that you forgive us, wash us, and cleanse us. Make us whole and put away the evil of our doing. Let us receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. This symbolizes the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take, eat it all. This symbolizes the blood. Drink it, drink all of it. was the blood I know it was the blood I know it was the blood for me one day when I was lost he died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. It is the blood that Jesus shed for us. Way back on Calvary. It reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength from day to day shall never 
lose its power. God bless. Well, we're out of time for another weekly edition of New St. Paul Live, but we do hope that you've been blessed and encouraged Hallelujah. by that word. Again, we thank you for joining us, and let's pray before we go off the air. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for each and every family that's represented, each and every person that's out there watching us today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Keep your arms of protection around them, Lord. Bless their home, bless their family, and bless their affairs. Lord, we'll be grateful to give you all the glory My and Redeemer. the honor. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, until we see you next week right here on social media, right here from New St. Paul, join us next week at 12 noon. God bless you. Hey, New St. Paul family. I am Brother Arthur Hall, and I'm here to explain the two different ways that you can worship the Lord in your giving while you're at home watching this live broadcast. The first way is you can open your web browser and type in New St. Paul Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. Once you get there, you'll click the link and it'll open you up to the New St. Paul Tabernacle website. Once you're on the website, there are two buttons that you can give through. You can give through the offering tab or the tithes tab. And once you click on those links, it'll take you to the next page that says PayPal. And you can give whatever desired amount that you want to give. It's that simple. The second way to give is through your phone. You go to your Google Play Store or your App Store and type in Givelify. The next step after it's finished downloading is to type in our name, New St. Paul Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, and you'll find us. And from there, you're able to set up a free one-time profile, and then you're all set to give. Those were two digital ways that you can give offerings and pay your tithes but there's one other way you can worship the lord with your giving and that's through the regular mail you can mail your offering or tithe into the church at 15340 southfield drive detroit michigan 48223